on the Wales Road. One, they found a Neanderthal skull in the North Sea, shallow sea that was land. Just a bone left, shielded once in its skim of skin, like the soft lives running their course above on the Wales Road. He's his own message in a bottle, delivered by sea, as the fire takes messages to the questionable gods. The Odyssey began in October 2009, when Sydney-based poetry organisation, The Red Room Company, took a two-month sea journey along Australia's east and west coasts, gathering original poems about the ocean from all sorts of characters. That journey was called Sea Things. Um, yeah, I'm Michael Morris. I've just come in from Palm Cove. Uh, thought I was just dropping a letter in, but uh, I'm, I'm going to read part of the poem out. Being a kid and riding waves all day, and being taught by the dolphins the essence of play, these are the things that cannot be taken away. The memory of finding a dead dolphin, and even a bomb, and the joy of two floating 44-gallon drums, to a crate of old bottles lids all still on but the mystery as the contents is gone or a half-eaten flipper on a beach all alone or a nautilus shell with its beautiful stripes or a sea snake swimming by the jetty lights launching from hobart and ending on thursday island the palms were collected in two duffel bags these bags were moved from ship to ship with support from captains crocodiles and other members of australia's sea industry the Red Room crew joined the last leg of the journey. On board a ship called the Trinity Bay, we headed north to Cairns, then Thursday Island. Sea Things is an attempt to learn more about why the sea is such an inspiration for poetry. If a poet from Tassie feels the same way about the sea and poetry as a kid in remote northern Australia, and what does poetry mean to those who live and work on the sea, way beyond the cities? Too. Like sport, folk tales and magic, the sea is not decimal. Its measures are feet and inches, the cubits of Noah's Ark, or Fathom's arm spans cartwheeling down. And the king waves come in threes. It has always been bright with gods and dark with gods, their names piled up in waves. Freud's um, theory of the oceanic theory Freud was an atheist who wouldn't, did not accept a religious uh, explanation of um, wonder in the universe. That it was a, a secular explanation that um, the human psyche is overwhelmed by the uh, um, his or her experience um, in nature. I think uh, poetry is uh, another form of oceanic feeling. I came on the ship and found not only was I going on a voyage I'd wanted to go on for a long, long time since they started it, but then there was all this poetry happening and of course I love poetry, I read poetry, I write poetry, I teach children poetry to speak it and understand poetry and so that was added a whole new dimension to the ship. And also learning about meeting Graham and reading his poetry which I wasn't familiar with and I have now intend buying his work and finding out about the Red Room and um, that's, you know, I'll be putting that on my favourites now and tracking you down on that so now it's been a, just marvellous. Well, I'm Graham Miles, I'm one of the commissioned poets for the project and I think what interested me most about the Sea Things project was the difficulty of writing about the sea, that the sea is something that a lot of poetry is drawn towards, but that it's a serious problem for poetry as well, because it's, um, like many, other, many of the other things that poetry is particularly drawn towards, is a, a particularly non-linguistic non sort of thing, um, that our experience of the sea is often not much to do with the way we, we speak about it. Um, so I was drawn in particular towards looking at the sea as mediator and the way that human lives touch upon the sea, move in and out of the sea, and uh, was using that as a way of approaching it. Uh, in the course of the project, I've noticed how much poetry is to do with the sea. It's not something I've ever really reflected on before, um, that uh, even, even when, when poets are writing about such a range of different things in different cultural contexts, that the sea just always seems to return. Hi there, my name is Frank David. 
I'm from the uh, Kulkalgal tribe in the central part of Torres Strait. Uh, we're standing on Thursday Island at the moment, which is called Waiben, in the Kaurig Nation. I want to acknowledge all the Kaurig people for standing here with Land Bodempla for making this photo, this film here. That's all. Torres Strait Creole is the first language of lots of our students on Thursday Island and at the secondary campus we've also got a lot of students who speak um, Kalakauya, Kalalaguya, Miriam Mer, traditional languages so uh, we definitely as teachers and educators have to be aware of their language situations and cater for it and it makes teaching really interesting and fun. Yeah, and, and kids engage with poetry. At first they're very standoffish, um, but that can be a language barrier to start with. And it's just about breaking that down. And the kids here have, have a natural gift in this area, I think. The war in the islands. My name is Renee. Cannons left over on Green Hill from a war near a windmill. Rocks nearby waiting for the right time to leave the mountains. Dark green islands, every shape and size. Minefields are still present in the islands, never wanting to go away. When you're far away from home and when you come back, the first thing you do is you, you would like your family to sing to you, island songs and all of that. And th that's how we still Keep, keep connections when we, when we leave our, our island. And so the songs and poems and all of that are based either on the sea, the land, the sky, water, anything, Na nature. It's not often that in a remote community we get the chance to have people come in and bring things like this for our students, opportunities like this. So it's always exciting when, when people come and do that sort of thing for our kids. Hello, my name is Tao Mamat and I lived on Thursday Island for 11 years. I have a pet dog named Joe and he is two years old. Today has been amazing and I, I loved it. When I was with Joe, Graham and Steve, Dave and Tamron. And I love working with them because they show me how to write a poetry. And if, it, if they didn't come to the island, I didn't know how to write a poetry. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. My poetry is about raining happiness. The kids are rolling and the rain is falling with drops of happiness and laughter. It fills the pond with water and love, which stays for longer and longer. The sand changes to mud and clay, and the children will say, let's play. Then drops and even more drops made the children say, hip hip hooray. Thank you. Uh, well, bro, is, there's nothing better than being out there. Um, yeah, you go to work, man. Yeah, eight, nine to five. But out there, you do your nine to five out there. It's, it's way more better than going to work, mate. Even though you're working out on the sea. But um, yeah, you you have more. I I think you. The the best thing about being out on the sea, bro. I'll tell you this, is is you can hear silence. That's the best thing about being out there. You can hear silence. No, no one hears silence because everyone is too used to noise. See, if you take your time out to go out on the sea, you will hear silence. And that's the best thing that will ever happen. <laughs>